intro, so thank you for joining me. My name is Dan, welcome to another episode of Rough and Ready. In this episode, we're gonna finish fixing the power hammer. We're gonna make a set of these lovely tongs and we're gonna cook some gorgeous stew. If you enjoy the videos where we do the cooking in the forge, let me know because uh, I want to ask people something about that at the end of the video. I also got some information about steel. So go to the, or no, go to the end, watch the video and at the end we can have a chat about some of the other stuff. For every two steps forward, sometimes there's a step backwards. This leaked, which is a pain in the bum. I think it's because we were rushing. So I'm gonna strip it off before I show you how it works, because I can't show you how it works, it's leaking. But uh, I'm gonna strip it off, get the water out of it, uh, give it a good clean, take the Perspex uh, ring out, and then what I'm gonna do is I've got some rubber. I'm gonna try and make a little gasket up, see what happens. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go from there, I think. So let me get this off and I'll see you in a minute. Well, simple little fix this one. Uh, I just thought about how it would have been done back in the day and um, having some sort of silicon or um, some sort of liquid rubber or whatever wasn't, wouldn't have existed um, at sort of when this was made, I don't think. Um, so I just cut a bit of rubber, put it behind the glass. So the glass is in contact with the brass, the rubber's in between the, um, the body of the the gauge and then yeah so it seems to have worked. The process of setting this is basically six drips a minute or one drip every ten seconds so I just sat and uh, twiddled this little thing on the side here until we got to what I needed which was good and it looks um, uh, looks good to me uh, however the performance seems to have dropped off ever so slightly and I think that might be because the tape's not working properly but we still need to adjust the valve up so that's something else that needs to be done, but I'll do that shortly. Been running the hammer now for a couple of weeks and we did some adjustments to the valve timing which we're gonna redo um, valve timing valve adjustments valve setting I don't know the right word anyway we're gonna do some more adjustments to it I'm gonna show you this bit I've already done it but I turned the camera on after I taken it apart which was stupid so you basically filmed the top of this power hammer whilst I was taking everything off so that was good uh, anyway yeah so we're gonna uh, pull the top of the valve out we readjust it to its max up setting and then see how we get on. Because uh, last time we adjusted it, the belts were slipping because someone put the belts on wrong. There you go. <sighs> Thank you all. Could you push the handle all the way down? All the way down? No, you don't need to click it or anything, just push it down. Lovely! Right. Okay. So I'm going to undo this Allen key here and basically that passes through um, and holds this top nut on. I'm not sure what this top nut's for. I think it's for a shackle or something so you can lift this out of the crane. It's quite a long weighty bit of kit. So that pin comes out and then this undoes like so and then by the power of magic this top part here comes off. Yeah, you can let go now. Yeah. This is the valve that we're adjusting um, and uh, there's two nuts either side and depending on the location of the nuts depends on um, the position of this inside the main valve and 
what I've done, it was too low, it was, was set to nothing. I don't know what the setting was for before, um, but this, what we did on John's advice was we put it to zero. Uh, so basically it was flush with the top of the valve. He said, if that doesn't improve it, put it at higher. So we'll do that next. So we're gonna try, we we're gonna try and run it so that it's higher. Um, so three mil above the top of the valve. And if that doesn't sort it, we'll drop it to lower. And then what I'll do is I'll basically pick which one seems to perform the best. And then we'll go from there. So I'm gonna put this washer back on. I'm not sure if you saw, but I just cleaned a load of goo out of the um, threads because this was a real pain to get. Um, it was a real pain to get um, these nuts to sit on properly. Take this bottom nut, get that on there. Right, I'm going to adjust this up to its highest setting, or what I think is its highest setting, which is all the way up, I believe. Cool. I'm going to grab that in the vise. Okay, and then where's the other lock? Can ring? I'll pop this locking ring on. I'm going to straighten these tabs and then I'm going to pop this locking ring on. There we go. Just learnt something there. That's going to be too high now. Right, before we lock that down, I'm going to pop that back into the hammer and just see how it sits. So what we want to do is we want to put the hammer into a position where we can adjust the valve so it's flush with the top of the head. So that's what it was on before and now what I want to do is have it 3mm higher. which I've got just over two. So this needs to come up just a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure the distance between the top of the screw and the top of the nut. And that gives me 266 and we had 109 uh, on the clearance. So I can, I've got enough room here to lift this up so that we're adjusted properly. So I'm gonna take this out and do it on the vise again. Okay, cool. I'm gonna say that's cool for that. Um, and uh, then uh, I'm gonna fold the tabs back up now. And hopefully that's, ooh, that's all gonna be sorted. Um, to work this out, what I've done is I've measured across the straight edge. I zeroed it. I zeroed it across the straight edge and then I put the straight edge on and then I'm measuring off using the back uh, to get that to touch off. And that is giving me two, three now. What's going on? There's three there. It's three mil I'm looking for. Yeah, just off three mil. Okay, we'll give that a go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crush these, bend these tabs up, and then hopefully that'll lock that all in place and we can see how it goes. <laughs> one might be the craziest one yet. <laughs> got a Dutch oven, I've uh, got some shallots, I've got some Chantilly's carrots, got some beef stock, we've got some stock. Um, so I need to make some tongs. 
going to make some tongs out of this bit of bar and then we're going to um, fry up a load of steak and then um, yeah make a stew. Okay, a lot like with our toasting fork that I made in the previous Rough and Ready, if you haven't seen that, definitely go and check that out. I'll leave a link up here. Um, that's probably the wrong side, it's probably over here, so wherever the link needs to be. Um, 8 by 25, inch by 5 sixteenths, I'm going to stick that uh, in the fire. I've marked up 30, uh, 30 mil, 80 mil, 30 mil, 80 mil, 30 mil, so like inch and 3 eighths. Uh, just over three inches, inch, uh, three inches and a quarter, uh, inch and three eighths, inch and three quarters, inch and three eighths. Okay, so that 80 mil drew out to about uh, 205 mil, roughly. So that's quite good, I'm quite happy with that. So what we're gonna do now is, um, I've marked up that back last 30, I'm gonna chop it off there, quench all this end off, and then stick it in the um, fire the other way around so I can hold on to this end. Um, that way I don't need a pair of tongs to make a pair of tongs. So these are done, uh, second time's a charm, uh, apparently. Um, I'll explain more about that at the end of the video and show you the failure. Um, and I've just sharpened up this lovely knife. This is one I got off of um, Chris Cassidy a uh, very long time ago, pretty much from the beginning of the channel. Um, and I used the Alex Norton techniques of sharpening. He does some real cool, clever little at DIY at home tricks for doing some sharpening. Custom chopping board. <laughs> Let's, uh, let's cut up some food and make some stew. Right, got some slice, sliced steak because, um, to be honest with you, I wasn't quite sure if we were gonna be able to cut up the steak. Um, you don't need anything special um, because the stewing process is gonna put all the flavor, well, it's gonna tenderize the meat and basically make it all nice and tidy. Um, I'm gonna chuck this onto our hot plate. If you haven't seen it before, check out another rough and ready to see the hot plate. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to sear the meat so that it's got a ground outside. Don't want to cook it for long, we just want to sear it. Okie dokie, so I've got some shallots here. I'm going to chop these uh, basically in half. Oh, that's so much sharper. <laughs> should have done that ages ago. Oh, nice for a speak. I've got some little um, Chantilly's carrots. All I'm going to do is I'm going to top them, and then if they've got any like proper stringy bits on the bottom, not that they taste bad, but uh, the reason I'm doing these is because they're quite small and they're going to cook quite quick. So yeah, I'm not going to peel them. Just going to smash them in the pot. Got a cast iron pan here, Dutch oven, whatever you want to call it. 
and uh, sealed it up with some oil. And I'm going to take a, a beef stock cube or stock pot thing. I'm going to chuck one of these in here. Like that. And then I'm going to take this over to the hot plate, stick the beef in there, uh, some um, uh, the secret ingredient, we'll do that in a second, and a few other bits and bobs, and uh, get it all um, slowly bubbling away over the fire. Okay, so we're going to start depositing the beef and the onions in here, and Try and get all that nice flavour. Ah, oh, I've lost one. Bloody onions. I'm gonna put a little bit of boiling water in there. About a tablespoon of ketchup. And then I've got a stout from a local brewery, Watkins, if you're watching Watkins. <laughs> and then this lovely little pair of tongs bottle opener that Matt made me, bless him. Uh, Matt Jordan. Right, stout, that goes in next. Right, so uh, I'm just going to stick this on the uh, dying coals. Um, I don't want to get this pan too hot. We've got a special uh, special bit of kit that you'll see very shortly that we've also made. Um, but what I want to do is I want to get the, um, the stock to melt. And um, I also want it to thicken up a little bit so it becomes a bit more gravy. So we've got some flour. I'm going to just stick a teaspoon of flour in there to start with and then see how we go and thicken it up and just keep going like that. So the problem is, um, me and Luke would like to get on with some work and uh, unfortunately I can't get to the forge because the Dutch oven's in the way. Fortunately though, we've made ourselves a little whack. Um, Luke's going to help lift this up. We're going to put the rack in and then we'll be able to put the Dutch oven on there and uh, let it boil away slowly for the next however many hours we like. So that's on a rolling boil, just going to leave it there for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half and then we'll come back to it. If all the water boils off, you might need to add a bit more water. If there's not enough stock in it, add some more stock. If you want it more thick, add some more gravy or some uh, corn flour or just some plain flour. That'll thicken it up as well. Um, I'm not a master chef uh, of any description, I'm a bit rud rudimentary and basic, but that tastes pretty good and smells pretty awesome and in about an hour that beef's going to be nice and tender and nice and soft. The longer you can leave it for, the tenderer that beef will get. Right, I'm going to leave it to it. Okay, it's been cooking now for two hours plus um, whatever the rolling boil was and the frying. So it's probably takes probably three hours, isn't it? Yeah. It's not a quick make. <laughs> and um, it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna start dishing some up and we're gonna have it with a bit of bread and some, just a bit of bread, basically. Mm. 
basically put all the beef in there. Stew turned out great and these uh, worked okay. The spring's ever so slightly a bit. It's a bit hard to make it a bit springy. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm probably just gonna grind it down a little bit and thin it out and see if we can get it. But um, yeah, really enjoyed making these. And I'm really enjoying doing these for the uh, rough and ready. So hopefully you're enjoying them as well. They're gonna get more complex. They're gonna get a bit more exciting. They might even become a whole series on their own at some point because that one took a lot longer than one of the, some of the Okay, ones. really like these, but they are a little bit hard to use. So what I need to do is I need to thin down some of this material at the back. Um, to be fair, I was in a bit of a hurry when I was making these. Some of these projects are getting pushed into a real time frame. They took about 25 minutes to make, which isn't very long to make something like this at all. Um, especially if you've got a power hammer and a striker, it's quite easy. Um, I've never made one before. That is a lie. I've made one before. We actually made two sets of these. Um, because the other one's broke. I'll show you those in a minute. Uh, but let's get on and just work out how we're gonna sort this. And this is one of the things that you should be aware of if you're gonna start making products that you probably wanna make a couple, A, to work out how to make them, and B, um, so that you can sort of understand where the problems are gonna be after you've made them. Now, if I hold these all the way down the end, they work reasonably well, but I'm, I guess I'm a relatively strong person. If I gave these, to the girlfriend, I don't necessarily think that she'd be able to use them quite as handily as I can. Right, let's get these hot, let's get them opened out, let's get them drawn out, grinded up a little bit and uh, get them working super duper. Didn't need to do much actually, just took a tiny, tiny little bit of material out. They're so much easier to use, they're so much nicer to use, so uh, definitely that was the thing to do. Yeah, so I thinned them up real nice. And hopefully they're gonna last a long time and they're gonna cook lots of food here in the workshop. Now I'm really, really stoked with these. I really enjoyed making them. Um, but um, one of the things that happened, um, I'm just gonna go over this super quick was this is the second pair. This is the first pair here, look at that god awful mess. Um, and as you can see, I've tried welding it back together and bending bits up and I think when I started to do the, because normally I'd do a, a 90 like that on the end, I normally do that and then bend it into a round, but when I did the uh, when I went to do the bend, not when I did the forging, but, when I, but then when I went to do the bend, I got a shut in there and I think I can find it on the camera because I'm pretty sure I know when it happened. And that caused some of the problem. But also, um, I yeah, hadn't thinned this out enough as well again. So I was having problems there. So yeah, pain in the bum. But we got there in the end. And I'm enjoying making the tools. I'm also enjoying cooking the food. I don't get a lot of chance to cook at the minute because of our home situation because of... Anyway, that's not important, but the important thing is I am getting to cook. I enjoy cooking. I have some other friends that I want to get involved with this part of the process, but that, because of COVID, that's not going to happen for a little while. But would you like to see videos, or do you think it's a good idea if I do the forged food videos as separate videos? Let me know what you think in the comments. I'd love some feedback on this. Um, we there's definitely some other options that we can try there's some more tools that we need to make there's definitely some bits and bobs that i want to do however what i don't want to end up doing is having a kitchen in here that's not the point the pro the idea is that the the the, the table is the anvil the, far, the the oven is the forge or the gas forge or whatever and the tools are all hand forged tools and i'm i'm quite cool about going out into the outside big world and making some camping tools and stuff if people think that's a good idea but anyway besides the point i've ranted on enough let me know what you think in the comments because i would love to know if you guys and girls at home think it's a good idea to just put some of these random videos up about cooking there. Okay, for the last couple of weeks, uh, for about a month now, maybe a bit more, I have been playing around with what is known as 709M40, which is a chrome ollie steel. It's what I've decided that I'm going to start selling um, as a 4140 or an EN19 equivalent. 
Unfortunately, in the UK, I can only get that as round bar. I can't get it in square bar. Now, what we used to do in the um, in the old days, not that long ago, is take forklift truck tyre and recycle it into um, recycle it into square stock and then sell that on. I don't have the time to do that at the minute, and it is something that will come back. I hope, um, but it's not something I can do at the minute. However, what I do want to, and to be honest with you, the price was reasonable for that stock. So, you know, it's it's hard. I don't know. I don't know what to say about the hammer, the tong blank stuff and all that, because it's a difficult situation whereby it was lucrative-ish, but at the same time, it's very time consuming. Uh, yeah, it's frustrating. But my point is... What I want to know is if I can get uh, an EN9 or an EN8, which I think is about 4%, 5% carbon steel, and it's a carbon steel, it's not a tall steel or a chrome ollie or anything like that, are people interested? The other thing I want to know is I've been using a lot of S7 recently. Uh, there will be a video about the S7, but do people want to get hold of S7? Because um, I'm not against it like I am against the H13. I've had a lot of problems with the H13 in the past. I know it's not something I want to push particularly if I can avoid it but the S7 seems to be working a little bit better for me uh, however we're not a year and a half in like I was with the H13 I went sorry I'm getting rid of the H13 so yeah long and short of it is please let me know if you want some square stock if you want some square stock I think I can get some uh, I can get uh, some some carbon steel in square stock but if you're in the States, I'm pretty sure with the thing I've got going on with hands, I can get square stock in the 4140. Okie dokie, kids. I'm going to leave the video there. Thank you so much for joining me. I don't know why I'm doing this stupid voice. I'm going to leave the video here. Thank you so much for joining me. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are already a subscriber, please ring that bell for notifications. I'll tell you every time I make a video. Uh, I'm going to try and condense these. Uh, rough and ready's down into some slightly smaller videos with some weirder stuff in there's some stuff coming up that some people are going to be like you did that last year uh that's a clue by the way um and then um yes if you'd like to support the channel in any way shape or form you can it's really really simple uh you can just leave a comment just drop a comment down below. Tell me what you thought of the video. Tell me what you thought of the stew. Tell me what you think of the stock. Tell me what you think of the things that I've talked about in this video. Ask me questions. Uh, it's a great way to communicate with me if you want to. The other thing you can do is share this video. It's a great way to support this channel because the more people that know about it, the more people that watch it, the more money I make off of ad revenue and all that good stuff. So go and do that as well. And the other thing you can do if you're interested in supporting the channel in a bit more personal way, is go and check out my Instagram. The Instagram is a great way to find out what's going on before it goes on on the channel. Um, stories are uploaded quite regularly. And then some of, sometimes they're a load of crap, sometimes they're pretty good, but stories are uploaded quite regularly on there so you can see what's happening on a day-to-day -day basis. The other thing I do is I put posts up on the grid. You can also go over and check out my Etsy. Now this is a great way to support the channel because it allows you to buy something from me that I've made, that I'm really proud of, that you get to have at home. And uh, we make everything from hammers, we sell stock, we make t-shirts, we've got all sorts of really cool, amazing stuff up on the Etsy if you wanna get hold of it. If there's something I think is good for blacksmithing, it will be there, so go and check that out. Okay, I'm going to leave the video there. Thank you so much for joining me. I do hope you enjoyed this video. I had a lot of fun putting these last two uh, rough and readies together. They come out amazing. The cooking's going really well. Uh, I don't know what the results of the questions I've asked from the uh, whether or not I should put the cooking stuff together as a series on its own, but we will get to that very soon in the future. I'm going to leave a link here to a video that YouTube thinks that's good for you. This is the uh, most recent uploaded video and down here is last week's rough and ready please go or last rough and ready go and check that out and uh, that's the subscribe button thank you so much for joining me goodbye bye bye